All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. Now, I will also have my box office update right after I post this video, so look for that a little bit later. But I wanted to get up my DC video for the day first. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and jump in here. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to show you today is going to back up some of the things that I have talked about in my previous two videos. And there's a lot of information coming out about the old DCEU all of a sudden, and it's got a lot of people excited. And David Ayer even made a big announcement on social media either today or yesterday. And we're going to take a look at this stuff. This is some pretty crazy stuff. So first off here, we have the actual profits of the Snyder films, where he was either the director or the executive producer. And um, he did a lot of stuff. On, he did a lot of stuff behind the scenes on these movies other than just directing. But he was on board all the way through Aquaman. And if you remember, Aquaman was the bat last big film for DC, which also made the biggest profit, as you can see, on this chart. And then things took a no nosedive once Warner Brothers got rid of him and decided to go in a different direction. And this comes from Deadline and is from Greg Silverman who is an, a, a former Warner Brothers executive. And he says, Zack Snyder's films were very, very profitable. That goes back to my last video, but here they actually break down the profits. And it says, according to Deadline, Snyder's DC films directed and or produced brought an estimated $820 million total of profit, almost a billion dollars. Man of Steel made $47 million. Now it's actually more than that when you count in the merchandising and, and what that brought in, it's way over a billion dollars. You have Batman versus Superman, which doubled the amount of money that Man, Man of Steel had actually profited the studio. Suicide Squad made even more at $158 million. And then Wonder Woman even topped that with $252 million. And then you had Aquaman, which even topped Wonder Woman at $260 million. So for all those naysayers out there now who say Snyder's films didn't resonate with audiences or that they didn't like the direction the studio was doing is a lie. It has now been proven by people who are out and talking about this, and some people are assuming that maybe some non-disclosure agreements, some NDAs have expired, and these people can now come out and talk about this stuff. And we are now getting the full picture that Warner Brothers just turned their way turn their back on these profits that Zack Snyder wasn't moving fast enough to try to catch up with what Marvel was doing. And, and Zack Snyder was never going to try and catch up to what they were doing. He was building up to something more epic and more amazing, and they wouldn't let him do it. Now, I thought this was interesting, where the, uh, Jay Oliva came out and came, there was uh, some guy on Twitter that said, yeah, never happening. The Snyderverse is dead bury it we moved on to better and jay oliva had said look looks like my interview made it on variety i do really wish that ben had made the version that we worked on together and that's when the person said you know we moved on to better and jay oliva said who's we and i think that's the sentiment of most dc fans the ones who were on from day one we got hosed the fans got hosed the only ones that are really backing up James Gunn right now are the Marvel fans who like James Gunn. It's not the real DC fans because those fans are not showing up for the movies, even though they claim that they're true DC fans. Now, I hope that this is not true. I have not been able to confirm this. It's that movie news does sometimes make some speculative posts, but it says James Gunn admits that Marvel and Disney are working together with DC Warner and a crossover is imminent. I certainly hope this is not true. Otherwise, this is the only reason that James Gunn came over to Warner Brothers. And we don't want to have any part. Those of us that are true DC fans want no part of what Disney has to offer. We want something different. So David Ayer posted, he's been posting quite a bit recently. He's getting very vocal, and this has to do with the title of my video today. But he posted out a brand new picture of Jared Leto as the Joker. Uh, pretty snazzy there. And, you know, he had over an hour's worth of material that was supposed to be in the movie cut. An hour. We got maybe five minutes with him in the film. He put his heart and soul into this role, and it got butchered by the studio. Now, somebody told him not to call out David by saying this, but do you know this was released in back, you know, was released back in 2016, right? 
That's from the Nerd Rage podcast. Here was the response by David Ayer. He says, what's your advice on how to navigate this situation with grace? There's a genuine curiosity and interest from a lot of people, and I'm aware of there is another group of people that have fun mocking the film. Your comment is a perfect example of how many are magnetically drawn discussions to the 2016 film in a negative way. Have you ever had an experience in life that didn't until the way you wanted? That dragged you? That made you rethink everything? I have. All I know is my unseen film plays much better than the studio release. The interest in my cut being show, being my cut being shown seems real and organic. And James Gunn told me it would have its time to be shared. He absolutely deserves to launch, and it says to launch his DC universe without more drama and old projects. In a way, I'm chained to this thing. I'm riding a tiger here and navigating the situation the best I can. Life is a very strange journey. Welcome to my TED Talk. So that comes from David Ayer himself. Now, there's more that they talked about in regards to David Ayer's Suicide Squad. And there was that scene at the end with Bruce Wayne going in to meet with Waller. And he asked, you know, this was a John's reshoot and wasn't in the original cut, much like the Flash scene, but I don't know. David Ayer responded with, not a reshoot. I shot the Wayne Waller scene in Toronto during principal photography. The shutdown, or my friend's will line, was intended to hint at Justice League. So he is out there supporting his movie and, and getting vocal with the fan base. Now, it looks like Blue Beetle may do a little better than they were expecting. Uh, still, $30 million is not that great. But Blue Beetle looks to fly to $30 million in its U.S. opening. Early look at the box office. Now, this is coming from Deadline. Deadline is not always correct. They keep adjusting their numbers. Now, even if this does $30 million on the opening weekend, it's going to tank after that because only the true fans of this character or people who are curious are going to go see it opening weekend. And then it's going to take a big nosedive. So it's only got about one or two weeks in the, th- in the theater before it will virtually have no people going to see it. Uh, so we'll see how this ends up. Now, what I don't have is the picture where David Ayer had posted and said that he expects to have Suicide Squad, his version, shown, and that James Gunn plans to release it before any of his DCU projects get off the ground or shown. So there there is that. He's putting that notion out there that this is going to get released before 2024 or before 2025 when things start getting off the ground. Now, the strike is going to change everything, and this is a golden opportunity for Warner Brothers Discovery to release these things that are done and in the bag that are going to take very little effort to generate revenue. And it should be released in theaters to give people like myself a chance to go see it the way it was originally meant to be seen. I'm actually excited for this. I hope it gets a physical release. I want to own it and have it part of the whole DCEU continuity up through Aquaman. I'm going to love everything that that goes up through Aquaman, and then after that I'm just going to act like things just don't exist. Uh, I, 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 those first five or six films are absolutely amazing. And I even enjoyed the version of Suicide Squad that was released in theaters. But knowing it could be so much better has me very excited. And I'm looking forward to seeing what David Ayer has to produce for us and, and, you know, what all the hoopla is about. So there's my DC update for the day. You know, Warner Brothers is still on fire. They're still bleeding money. There is no chance that they're going to get out of this just with their movie division. I will be doing an update on the box office, and you're going to see that Barbie did break over a billion dollars over the weekend. And so that movie is definitely helping the studio, but their $50 billion in debt, that's a drop in the bucket. They will never make their money back through their movie division. And so there is a big expectation that they're going to start selling off some of these IPs late next year or middle of next year. And that stuff like DC Comics could be sold off to other companies entirely, which I do hope is the case. I want them, I just want Warner Brothers to be away from this IP. They've never respected it. They never will. I don't care who comes in. They just don't have the passion for these characters that they deserve and that they should get. 
And so I'm looking forward to maybe Universal or somebody else taking over. I just don't want Warner Brothers a part of this anymore at all. All right, we will see you guys on the next update.